One year made a huge difference in the view at the Capitol. This summer is coming to a close, but we all remember the calls for change that echoed across downtown Nashville in 2020. The protests of last summer have often been compared to the civil rights movements of decades earlier. And we now know that just as those leaders of the past were tracked, so were the activists of today. News Channel 5's Levi Ismail investigated how the state monitored activists from the People's Plaza in a story you'll only find here. A lot of time has passed. Then again, it's what happened in this space, at this plaza, that Anjanette Edwards will probably never forget. We knew that we needed to get out there and we needed to make some noise because this wasn't just gonna be another black life that was taken and that was swept under the rug. The world had just watched George Floyd die at the hands of a Minneapolis police officer. So for more than 60 days, friends and strangers ate, slept, and protested from these steps. They called themselves the People's Plaza. It was, it was a um, second home at, at some point. The longer they stayed, the more tension there was with the Tennessee Highway Patrol that was told to now stand guard at the Capitol 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Otherwise, peaceful protests often ended in hundreds of arrests, and Ray DiPietro was there to capture it all. It's a mission of mine to document what's going on around me. As a freelance photojournalist, DiPietro is used to having cameras on him at all times. This was different. They wanted the photographers who were documenting the whole time in it, almost like a class photo. So that's why I'm there on the left. The picture he remembers was posted on social media by the People's Plaza. The one we showed him had numbers. It's because what we're seeing is the second page of a confidential dossier from the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security titled People's Plaza, Tennessee, significant personnel with more than two arrests. There were nearly 50 profiles. There's a lot in here. Names, date of births, addresses, social security numbers, charges, and photos ripped from social media, as well as high above the plaza. It's you? Yeah. They spelled my name wrong. <laughs> Much of this you may expect the state to have if you were arrested. You were never arrested? Oh, no, no. To my knowledge, you were never arrested. Mm -mm. Between these files, we counted six names who were never charged with anything. That includes Vicki Hambrick, the mother of Daniel Hambrick, who was shot dead at the hands of a Metro Nashville police officer in 2018. She attended one of these People's Plaza protests. It's more than a little unsettling for Edwards. Is your wearing a mask part of concealing your identity? A little bit. In this dossier, they go so far as to mention she's the daughter of a Metro Nashville firefighter. It makes me wonder what exactly they consider an infringement upon rights. Do you feel that you were targeted? These documents confirm that I, that I know I was targeted. You know, I was viewed as an organizer. Civil rights activist Justin Jones filed to get these documents in the first place. I start seeing these pictures. I was like, this is kind of weird. So I started going through it and reading it. The dossier lists who would take Jones' spot if he were ever removed, who among the protesters is an attorney. And then one of these, it says, you know, who was dating who? How is that relevant? The Department of Safety and Homeland Security declined an interview, but sent a statement that read, quote, when THP and other members of law enforcement repeatedly encounter the same individuals in situations that resulted in unlawful activity, it is common to have notes that assist engagement with those individuals. Notes are limited to publicly available information for events that take place over an extended period of time, end quote. But remember, the dossier includes information on people who were never accused of doing anything illegal. There is a chilling effect on people's rights to, to speak and associate when you know that the government's keeping a file on you. Thomas Costelli is the legal director for the ACLU Tennessee. He was also involved in revising a consent decree in Memphis for this type of surveillance. Their police were told they could use social media and body cameras with stipulations. We had an order from a court saying you can't even keep these files because there is such potential for abuse. The original decree dates back to 1978. Quite famously, there were FBI and state profiles on some of the leaders of the civil rights movements in the 60s, and it just hadn't stopped. We thought we were past that. Jones says a decree of this kind should apply to the entire state and not just Memphis, because even being at the plaza a year later, you still feel eyes on you. I think everyone who's seen this is unsettled by it. 
because like, as I mentioned, this is not just about our protest. This is about every right to protest in Tennessee. Levi Ismail, News Channel 5 investigates. Thanks, Levi. We did ask officials with the Department of Safety and Homeland Security if this was the first time they used this type of surveillance. Officials declined to answer. Instead, they said their previous statement, which Levi showed us, speaks for itself. Of course, this is a developing story, so be sure to stay with us for more.